so it's no secret what's in this budget. Your health, our priority. And in fact, right on the cover, they talk about the largest investment in health care. And the person who wrote the budget is the finance minister, Siobhan Cody. Thanks for joining oh, me. Oh, wonderful to be with you. And you're right, it is our priority. And I want to ask about that because it's a lot of the public's priority as well. How much pressure did you have to try and find more money to put into health care in this budget? Well, it is the largest investment in health care in our history, $3.9 billion dollars for health care but it's really about this balance of ensuring that we're making the transformations and modernizations implementation of the recommendations of the health accord for example at the same time as ensuring that we have a robust system today so what you'll see in the budget speech are you know investments in transformations in modernizations of the health care system things like health you know Lots of people without a family doctor, they're trying to figure out how this kind of leads to them ending up being able to get the health care they need. Is money going to be able to solve it? Because there, you know, there are bonuses in place to try and in encourage people to come here, but you know, is it really a money problem that we're trying to solve here with healthcare, or is it a bigger issue? Well, that's why I focused on transformations and modernizations, because there are a few things that we need to do to ensure we have that, you know, a reimagined healthcare system. Like you said, right now there's pressures on recruitment and retention, that there are monies available in the budget for recruitment and retention. But we also have to have, like, new family care teams. We've announced uh, 10 new family care teams, because what we're doing is saying uh, to a family doctor, doctors they can come work with other colleagues like uh, nurses and licensed practical nurses and and uh, and physiotherapists to do the fullness uh, of services for a patient I want to ask about some money questions and you know we've got a little deficit this year but you're projecting a surplus by next year a lot of this is thanks to the fact that the economy is doing well the price of oil is a lot higher than we expected even a year or two ago so I guess the question is, what happens if things don't hold? What happens if, you know, we end up with a recession that we're not expecting? Is there enough cushion built in to make sure that you're then not having to make some hard choices a year or two down the road? Well, you, you can, you know, you can never predict what may happen, but let me tell you what we're seeing today. So we've put in place a financial responsibility plan that is addressing our debt management, that is looking at our, old, our whole fiscal framework, and we're making changes that, not necessarily public changes, they are publicly known, but they're not necessarily what you, you talk around about around your kitchen table, like changes to the sinking fund and in enhancements to liquidity and those types of things that help in the background because really what we're trying to do is drive down the cost of borrowing if we if and anybody who has a credit card knows this they, they pay high high amounts on their credit cards if they lower the if they lower their their debt on credit cards they're going to pay less and that's what we're trying to do is lower that so we can free up some money for those times when there are bumps in the road but what we're seeing economically is this year we're going to have a very strong year we have good growth in in our non-renewable as well as our renewable resource industry. We have good growth in our technology sector and our tourism uh, sector. We have more people working than we've ever had. We have uh, population growth. First time in 50 years we have population growth. First time in many years we've had more kids in school. So all those are good economic indicators that say that our economy is stronger than it has been. Uh, you talked about oil and gas, for example, that is making up less and less of our revenues, still very important to the province. At a billion, over, just over a billion dollars in revenue this year. But again, it's 12 to 13 percent of our revenues, not 30 percent, which they were before. So almost two years ago, the Green Report came out and it highlighted the need to reduce spending, talking about cuts that we're spending too much. We're not seeing that really reflected in this budget here. Does that mean we, you've kind of moved away from that, that you've shelved the idea that we need to rein in that spending? We've had a lot of financial controls in place. So if, you know, they've the PERT report, the Premier's Economic Recovery Team report, talked about how you have to get your spending under control, you have to ensure that you have um, really good financial controls, and that's what we've done. So, for example, we haven't, we haven't increased our expenditures by very much. I, I, I went back 10 years ago and I looked at 2013. And in 2013, I looked at the amount of expenditures. If you put that today's value, we're spending less this year.
So it's all about control. We don't let department. We're, we're not growing departmental d departments. Uh, we're not giving them control, extra but funding. But it's not cuts. It's and not that's cuts, and that's important. We don't. Want, people don't want to have cuts to services. They want improvements to services, and that's what we're focused on. Well, Minister, thanks so much for joining me and sharing just a little bit of what's in the budget today. Well, I think it's very balanced. I think it's a positive budget. I think it's transformative for the people of Newfoundland and Labrador.